so many people and you literally get 30 seconds to impress them so my first contest that i ever participated in was open mic uk x factor had a lot more time wasting than the voice did Okay, everyone, let me welcome uh, Mr. Rohan from London, England. Uh, he'll be joining us today. Uh, can you please tell us a little bit about your background, about your life, just a little bit? Hi, so my name is Rohan um, and I'm 22 years old. I'm currently on my gap year after finishing my undergraduate degree at university in London. Um, and I had a YouTube channel that was doing well for music in the past, and I've recently started back up due to the coronavirus pandemic and being locked at home, and it's it's gaining some traction. Uh, you are um, a singer, right? Yeah, I'm a cover artist mainly. Yep. So I play guitar as well, and I sing primarily. Singing's my uh, my main thing. How did you decide to become a musician? Um. So. I became a musician quite late compared to other people. Everyone else I knew that kind of like age six or something that they were already playing an instrument. Um, and I actually started by picking up the double bass when I was like six and I hated it. Um, but I started singing when I was 10 and that's when I really, really wanted to become a musician. Like I started singing and I loved it and I got voice lessons. I was very much a shower singer until I was 10 and then I suddenly started singing at school and everyone was very, very surprised. Um, and I got voice lessons kind of right from the start, 10, 11 years old, I was getting voice lessons and I had vocal, I had singing lessons up until I was about 18. Um, so I did like, I don't know what the system is outside of England, but we have grades here for our instruments. Uh, so we have like one to eight and then anything above eight is like university level. So I did grade eight voice. Um, but, and, that, and that was like really challenging um, and it was an amazing learning experience. I think I picked up a lot of skills there. Like I think I'm very, very grateful that I had the opportunity to have music lessons um, and that I studied music so much because that also helped to make them cheaper because I learned so much about technique and stuff that I just wouldn't, I wouldn't know now. And it really helped me to make me, helped to make me the musician I am today. Uh, when did you uh, actually decide that you want to try this as a career, like not only the hobby? Um, so I had the kind of uh, stars in your eyes, kids vision when I was like 12 years old. And I really, I was like, oh man, I really, really want to be a pop star. Um, I kept like watching X Factor and stuff and I got really, really obsessed with it. Um, so that, I, that was when I kind of first ever thought about it. And then I'd say I properly thought about it as a career, like in a sensible way. When I was about 16, I was like, okay, I could maybe study music at university and kind of live and just really, really network and stuff for a few years. And then maybe I can like kind of, I guess I was like, oh, maybe I can then blow up and go somewhere from there. But I did a lot of things. I did a lot of different things. Like I was in sports teams. I was in like the jazz band, I was in the choir, I could I also played like the flute, I sang, oh, I was in tried, the plays as well. You actually tried many instruments. Yeah, yeah, and I was in like the plays as well. I'd be like the lead roles in the musicals. Um so I was kind of doing music and sport and then also like I did well in academics as well. So I think I think people some people definitely sports mainly, like a lot of the sports people really disliked me. For that like kind of i was like kind of coming into their territory they really didn't like me for that whereas like at university everyone's kind of quite normal about it but i think at school some people are like oh this is my thing and you know you're not allowed to have more than one thing And if you come onto my territory they, they they're they're very very territorial in school about sports like they have their they have their little groups and they don't like new people coming in I see, I see. um but you actually but yeah actually uh in the university music wasn't your major was it right no i studied law um, I very nearly studied music. I, I went to go and see some, well, we call them conservatoires here. I think, I think they're called the same outside of England as well. But like, yeah, I, I nearly studied music at university, but I decided not to at the last minute. Um, uh, as, do you know uh, why? 
Yeah. Um, so I, I had some issues with A level music. I think that I, I studied, so I studied music GCSE and A level. A level was. And that I think mean? so. A level is yeah. So for those people who aren't from United Kingdom, it is the level just before university. So it's like the final two years of school. Okay. Uh, so some people do IB. I know that. Uh, and I've forgotten what the other system is, but there is one more as well, I think. But yeah, um, so I I really disagreed with the way that a lot of A-level music was done. Um, it very much pigeonholed me. So I was a modern musician. And I loved jazz as well. Like I played the flute and stuff, but I only took my voice to kind of the highest level. I decided to kind of leave everything else a little bit lower. Like I was like, you need to have one instrument that you're really good at and you focus everything else kind of on the, in the background. I see. Um, is jazz like and, popular in London? Is it like big? Yeah, huge, massive. Oh, wow. Loads of like underground jazz bars and stuff. It's incredible, incredible jazz scene in London. Is it like a uh, certain area in London which is like a jazz area, like famous, or is it like all over? Soho. The Soho. Okay. Soho. Yeah, there are jazz clubs like Ronnie. I'm pretty sure it's Soho. Anyone's from London and knows the actual area, please don't call me out on getting that wrong. Uh, but so has places like Ronnie Scott's and um, oh, I've forgotten the other names, but there are, there are quite a few in Soho. And then there's like the Camden Jazz Cafe and Blues Kitchen, which are both in Camden. Soho's this um, famous one. Yeah, like Soho, Soho's got because Soho's got loads in there, and there's like a bar called Nightjar in um, Shoreditch, which I haven't been to. I was meant to go there on Valentine's Day. And I couldn't get a booking because it's supposed to be like one of the top bars in the world. It's very, very, exp it's, uh, it's like 12, 13, 14 pounds for a cocktail, which I was like, that's quite a lot of money, but we could go there for like one drink. And I thought that could be quite nice because it's like you get really, really up close jazz music. Like there's like literally 10 of you in the bar and it's like you have the musicians. They're like really top level musicians and you have them to yourselves. And I would absolutely love to, to do that. Um, Tell us about this... Uh contest that you participated in which ah, was the biggest yeah. one uh, which was the first one so my first contest that i ever participated in was open mic uk um so if you just type in open mic uk on google you can you can apply yourself it's um i think it's good experience i i think it's a good it's a good contest to get performance experience so it starts you know it's like like any other contest there's multiple stages before you get on in front of a live audience. I think it's like one day of auditions per area. And then you're split into like areas of England. So I was like in the Southern region um, and I got to the semifinals. So that, that was pretty cool. Um, I think it's especially good if you write your own originals, which I did at that, at that stage. Um, and to be honest, I was probably better at writing originals then than I am now. because I just, I got really put off it by A levels, but, um, I think the focus is very much on songwriting because what they look for is they look for someone who's kind of the full package in terms of songwriting, image, all of it. It's, it's a good competition, but just be aware that like, whilst it's good experience, I think um, it won't always necessarily help you progress forward because there are certain very specific requirements that they want people to fulfill. Um, but that's the same as any as any show or competition that there is. Okay. So like I also did the voice um, and an X Factor and like it's very very similar. Like from the word go, like um, I mean I don't know if this is necessarily true, but everyone I know who's been yeah, on this about the voice. Like, this is like really interesting. From, like how it came to your mind to participate in the voice. So I, I, to be honest, yeah. X Factor was my first choice at, at that age. I've now come to kind of dislike X Factor. I was 16, so I was just about old enough. Oh, okay. um, so, so you're going to be 16 starts, or you're going to be 18? You've got a 16 or over, yes. Yeah. So Open Mic UK is open to anyone. Um, and then uh, the voice and X Factor is 16 and over. Okay. Um, at that point, it was like, when the voice had just started so they weren't really taking on many people who were younger and i was quite inexperienced in terms of like you know in the industry i hadn't really seen much and stuff so i was kind of there with like wonder staring around like wow there are all these people this is amazing and it was really cool like you know it's very very tough so i got through to the round just before tv i believe 
And um, how many rounds are before TV? So I couldn't tell because like a few, like a they, several. They did different things to me than they did with the other people. Because some people they sent home straight away. Like, well, they they put them through and they sang and they were like, yeah, you're great. We'll 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 get in touch. And other people they obviously told to go home. But then these other people, I was in like a small group. They were like, oh, yeah, you know, you'll hear from us. And then they spoke to me and they were like, we want to interview you. And they asked me like lots of really personal questions about school and my friends. And they were like, you know, um, how's family life or your favorite subjects? So they were asking a lot, a lot of a lot of questions. They did like quite an in-depth interview with me. So I think that's why I was like pretty convinced I got to the round just before TV because they gave me like a leaflet with like loads of dates and they were like, we'll be filming on these dates and we could call you in on one of these. Um, I mean, I never got the call, unfortunately, but I, th- I think it's a good thing. That's that still, it's a good experience. How it's really it's like great experience. Yeah, great, great experience. But I think, I think um, if I was the parent of me at that age, if I was my, my parent... I would I think I'd still encourage me to go for it but I don't think I think I'd be very cautious moving forward because I just don't think I just don't think a 16 year old can be ready to go on a show like that especially as I didn't I didn't know this until yesterday I watch a youtuber called Rumi official like a lot he's a singer and he was talking about these talent shows and he said that I because I didn't read the contract fully but they make in that contract, you literally sign away your rights to um, like the show to your public image. So the show can make you look really terrible or really amazing. Like, and I just don't think as a 16 year old, you can be ready for that I, at all. You know, I can, you can actually get like uh, emotionally hurt as well. Yeah. When you're so young, you're really, really vulnerable, you know, like, and there was someone in his YouTube video saying like, oh, um, I mean, obviously, I don't know if this is true. I don't know if this is true, but they, they, this is like a quote that they said that they were like, um, the producers kind of were telling this family, they were like, oh, you know, your, your daughter's just performed. She smashed it. She got through just do like a really big cheer for her when she comes in and they all cheered and she came in and she just burst into tears and it turned out she hadn't got through. But, like, they wanted the cameras to catch that scene of, like, everyone being like, oh, my God, yay, and then her just sobbing and be like, this is great TV. But, obviously, that is so evil to be, like, to make someone feel that way. It's, like, you know, how – it's just how can you recover from that? Like, I know I would feel horrendous if someone made me feel like that and did that to me. Um, Yeah, yeah. But it was a good experience. I learned a lot from it, and I met some nice people, and you know, I had a, I had a nice day. Um, X Factor had a lot more time wasting than The Voice did. Oh, okay. X Factor took a good two slash three days, and like even my first audition, the very very first audition, I waited like twelve hours to sing. I see. So so many it was people. So many people before. It. So many people, and you literally get thirty seconds to impress them. Oh wow! It is like it is, and it's like the Wembley Arena, and they put out these tiny cubicles, and you can see everyone else performing. So it's a little bit nerve wracking because like everyone is sort of listening to each other as well. Um, obviously, you get those kind of complete like <laughs> you get those people who are like really trying to be really bad like and like impress the judges so they can get on tv and stuff but yeah like you know you see a lot of stuff that's amazing and interesting everyone's pretty friendly to be honest and it's it's good experience it's good experience there's there's quite a link between um that competition open mic uk that i did and x factor that there's quite a strong link between them um i don't know if it's like an official link but it tends to be that like people who do well on Open Mic UK end up going on X Factor later on. Based on your experience, for people who are just starting out, uh, new musicians who want to promote their first videos on YouTube or have an account on Facebook or on Instagram, well, basically for new musicians, what are their first steps? What uh, they should do first? I think, well, like with the talent shows, I think you need to be ready, mature, like maturity-wise. There are a lot of young kids out there who I think need some guidance and just, you know, you you don't want to come into things too young. Um, And also I think 
one of the big, big things is promotion. You need to promote yourself properly. So things like Facebook adverts, you don't need to spend much. You can literally spend like five pounds and you'll get lots of link clicks, lots of people liking your page and stuff like that. I mean, you need to do it correctly. Actually, uh, it's saying that this uh, Facebook ads is a good option. Yeah, they, they are pretty good. I think they're not amazing. You shouldn't rely on them entirely, but I do think that they work just to kind of mainly for like smaller pages like me. So like my page, it just hit 300 likes today. Oh, wow. Yeah. So like for me, it just helps to, I tend to kind of, it helps to get a little bit, it boosts my engagement just a little bit. You know, I tend to get kind of a few between five and 10 likes kind of consistently on posts and it just gives it that extra push. Um, uh, but I would say like one of the most effective ways of promoting your own content is going on Reddit. I think Reddit is like, whilst Facebook groups and stuff like that, communities in there are okay. There are a lot of people who are what we call link dumpers. Uh, I'm trying to make it sound like I, I'm like a Reddit veteran. I'm not a Reddit veteran. <laughs> I just got into, but you know, that's what they're called on Reddit. Like they're just people who literally dump their link. They don't kind of give back to the community and they just expect everyone to kind of bow at their feet and listen to their stuff and go, oh my God, you're so amazing. But I think on Reddit, it's like very much it's give and take. And if you help people out, they will all come and listen to you and give you feedback and they'll give you attention. You'll get the attention that you deserve, which I think is fantastic. Like it's such a good way to promote yourself. What have you been like, yeah. up to recently? What are your latest so, projects? My latest projects are very much cover based. Um, I think I'm going to get back into original music though, to be honest. I'm at home so much nowadays and I'm messing around a lot with, like I'm still, I'm arranging music and stuff. So I am writing my own arrangements for stuff. But um, yeah, very much working on my YouTube channel. Okay, Rokhan, so we're running out of time, unfortunately, but uh, thank you very much for coming. And uh, it was really interesting to hear the story, especially about the contests. So we wish you good luck and uh, success with your future music career. Thank you very much for having me.